is Super Dawn on Super Screen Television, UHF 45, and Star Times, Channel 173. My name is Olambide Onka, and as usual, we're here again to bring you the best as far as the current affairs and the trending issues in Nigeria and the rest of the world is concerned. We'll be doing it beautiful, sound, and, you know, also with the mindset that it's just two days to the election. So I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are counting down to the election, which comes up on Saturday. INEC said they are ready. So welcome to Super Dawn, the beautiful Thursday edition. And it's also a pleasure to have you guys join us this wonderful Tuesday, Thursday morning on Super Dawn this morning. I'm blessed and wonderful. So many thanks for joining us. All right, beautiful day. Uh, two days to the election, basically, and we're still looking at... Uh, the fact that INEX said they are uh, all set and ready to go. Uh, as a matter of fact, I saw something like it's only the gods that can make the election <laughs> not go ahead from the INEX. So, uh, boastful statement there, which goes to show that to a large extent they are ready for the election. Yeah, INEX is really ready for the election with what we've seen in the past few days. Uh, the, for INEX to say that one of the reasons why they, they had to reschedule the um, election that should have taken place last weekend, this, this coming Saturday, shows that um, to some extent, whatever loopholes needs to be taken care of, they've, they've already tied it up that tidy that up. And then again, I heard in, over the news, I think yesterday or two days ago, where INEC chairman came out and said that they are already 95% to conduct the 2019 general election. So we're expecting and we're hoping that this weekend, the presidential and national assembly elections be conducted and we look forward to a peaceful and credible election at the polls this weekend all right so uh definitely we still have uh, uh just a few days to the election and uh if you haven't if you haven't really um you know made up your mind on who you're going to be voting for there's still time for you to do that now uh, just go online or you know perhaps listen to the things the testimony that people have to say about the candidates but well, then you have to draw your conclusion because it is essential that you know the candidates that you're voting for. You know, INEC have reset uh, officially uh, over 90, uh, 92 political, registered political parties for the election. So you can definitely make one out of the 92 that we have. But let's also tell you that it is very essential, it is very essential that you're not intimidated by anyone when you go to cast your, your vote on that day of the election. Also, we have a very interesting topic that we'll be looking at today. As a matter of fact, it's two topics that we'll be looking out for. And we hope that when the time comes for you to call in, you call in and make your contribution and the best of your knowledge. We'll take a break at this particular point in time. Just get your cup of coffee and get your bread or biscuit by your side because, you know, it's the breakfast show. Let's get started together. And when we return, it'll be time for the newspaper review segment on Super Dawn. Stay with us.
You welcome back to Super Done, and we're starting off now with the newspaper review where we look at the stories and making the headlines in the various newspapers this morning. And we'll be going to be reviewing the Vanguard newspaper, The Punch, The Nation, and Daily Chase newspaper this morning. I quickly start off now with the Vanguard newspaper. Barry shoot on site order is a call for violence, and that's coming for Onusuke. Buari shoot on site order is a call for violence, and that's coming from Onusuke. Atiku campaign angry over Obiano's memo to Anambra workers. Atiku campaign angry over Obiano's memo to Anambra workers. Polls, Buhari APC bent on ham twisting security. INEC to compromise process. Polls, Buari APC bent on ham twisting. INEC, um, twisting security, INEC to compromise process. And I also have here, um, INEC assures electorate of credible polls in Bauchi. It's good for them to really assure Nigerians about the credible outcome of the polls this weekend so that Nigerians will have this rest of mind and then go to the, um, to the polls and cast their ballot and then be, um, be at peace of mind. I also have here police nab 950 alleged political thugs in Kano police. Alleged NAB, 950 alleged political thugs in Kano. Appointment of judges should not be all commas affairs. Appointment of ju judges should not be all commas affairs. And that's coming from a senior advocate of Nigeria, Joaquin Lamu. And also on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper this morning, Quara ACPN suspends national chairman, adopts Atiku Saraki Atungwa. Quara ACPN suspends national chairman, adopts Atiku Saraki Atunwa. Polls shift for straighting smaller parties. Polls shift for straight, for straighting smaller parties. And finally, on the Vanguard newspaper this morning, Nava Voice vendors attempt to export 35,000 liters of stolen petrol. And that does it for me on the Vanguard newspaper this morning. All right, let's go now to the Punch newspaper where we have the first story here that says, only act of God can stop Saturday's election, says INEC. Remember I mentioned that earlier to you. Only act of God can stop Saturday's election, says INEC. Confidence there, and Nigerians should also be ready to cast their poll. Still on the Punch newspaper, we have this story that says, body back threat, ICC may prosecute El Rufai says Falano, body bag threat, ICC may prosecute El Rufai, says Falano. And now we have this one, suspended CGN's appeals suffer further delay. Suspended CGN's appeals suffer further delay. Still on the punch, NCAA to sanction telecoms operators over debt. NCAA to sanction telecoms operators over debt. And uh, still on the Punch newspapers, we have this one that says, Five domestic workers allegedly steal employers' 105 million gold jewelry. Five domestic workers allegedly steal employers' 105 million naira gold jewelry. And now on the, the Punch, we have this one that says, Headsmen attack Agatu community in Benue, kill 16. Headsmen attack Agatu community in Benue. Kill 16. Still on the Punch newspaper, we have this one that says foreign observers raise the alarm over security threat. Foreign observers raise the alarm over security threat. And now this one says Sokoto pays worker salaries ahead of election. Sokoto pays worker salaries ahead of elections. And finally, on the Punch newspaper, we have this one that says alleged 21 billionaire fraud. Court adjourns Dokwesi's defense till May 9th. Alleged 21 billion naira fraud. Court adjourns Dokwesi's defense until May the 9th. And that wraps it up on the Punch newspaper for today. So grab a copy of the Punch and read through for these and many more interesting stories on the dailies. And still on the front page, front page newspaper this morning, I'm sticking over now with the Nation newspaper. Falano advises and forces against intimidating voters. 
Falano advises armed forces against intimidating voters. And yet have army chief, ballot box snatches will be dealt with. Ballot box snatches will be dealt with. Police confirm attack on Kwara APC senatorial candidate others. Police confirm attack on Kwara APC senatorial candidate and others. PDP will be defeated on Saturday and that's coming from the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Asawaji Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. PDP will be defeated on Saturday, says Tunumbu. Two APC members shot dead by suspected a PDP thugs in Kwara. Two APC members shot dead by suspected PDP thugs in Kwara. That's really a sad one. And there you understand that when it's election period, you, you get to get stories like this and incidents as, as these um, happening every now and then. And also still on the front page of the Nation newspaper, Court of Appeal fails to hear an August suit. Court of Appeal fails to get an August suit. Or your government sacks Akala Sun as local government chair. Or your government sacks Akala Sun as local government chair. As still on the election, post shift, federal government orders payment of February salary. Federal government orders payment February salaries. I think it's, 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 it's right for the federal government to be calling for um, the payment of uh, February salaries for um, workers who are working with any of the government ministries, departments and agencies, just as Nigerians are looking forward to the polls this weekend. And also finally on the Nation newspaper, PDP to Army Chief, don't drag military into politics. Don't drag military into politics. You find this of this and more on the Nation newspaper when you get yourself a copy. All right, let's go now to the Daily Trust. And on the Daily Trust, the big story there says, Buratai will treat electoral saboteurs as enemies of state. <laughs> Interesting there uh, from uh, the chief of army staff. Buratai will treat electoral saboteurs as enemies of state. The writer to that story says, don't drag military into politics, PDP tells army chief. All right, we have this one that says, how I opened accounts for an organ with $30,000. That's from a lawyer. How I opened accounts for an organ with $30,000. This other one says, Jam postponed Saturday's mock exams. Understandably so, because of the elections. Jam postponed Saturday's mock exams. Details of that story is on page 3 of the Daily Trust newspaper. We have this other one that says industrial sector got 6.2 trillion Naira loans in four years. Industrial sector got 6.2 trillion Naira in four years. That's in page 17 of the Daily Trust. Okay, we have this sort of stories. Well, let, let, let me just uh, describe the picture we have on the Daily Trust. Well, this, the picture actually states an analysis of the voter turnout of Nigerian elections since 1999 and uh, visibly so we can see that in uh, 1999 we had 57.93 million uh, registered voters and then the turnout of voters in 1999 was 52.3% which represent 30.28 million people coming out to vote so there was a decline there from the normal registered voters and then in 2003 election, there were 60.82 million registered voters. And then the number of people that actually voted, the turnout of voters was 42.1 million people. And then in 2007, there were 61.56 million people. And there was just 35.39 million turnout of people. Then in, in 2011, there was 73.52 million people that were registered. And then we had 39.46 million voters that turned out for the elections. Also in 2015, that was a marginal drop, big time, big time drop. We saw 67.42 million people that were registered to vote. And then the actual number of people that voted in 2015 was 29 Point two three million voters, and that represented 43.65% uh, 
of the 100% voters. So you can see that there were really, really massive declines in terms of uh, elections compared to what we have in other countries. For example, in Ghana, there were 79.43% registered voters, and then the turnout of voters was 68.62, just a, a fractional percentage drop from the people that turned out to vote. Meanwhile, in the United States of America, it was 54.90% of voters, and then we had 55.50%, which means that there were even higher turnout of registered voters in the United States of America. So we need to understand the importance of casting our votes as citizens of this country. Let's go to the back page of the Daily Trust newspaper. We have this one that says, Kada City, Storm Plateau United as pillars down Abia Warriors. Yeah, yesterday's matches in the Nigeria Professional Football League, that was the MPFL, and Kada City, the newly promoted side, stunning uh, Plateau United. And uh, Kano Pillars beat Abia Warriors. So details of that story is on page 46 of the Daily Trust. And now in sports still, we have this one in tennis that says, Federer confirms clay court return after two-year absence. Roger Federer confirms clay court return after two-year absence. And in football, we have this one that says, Kedira out for a month due to heart condition. Sami Kedira out for a month due to heart condition. You want to find out details of that story, just grab a copy of the Daily Trust and read through. And then the article by Jideofo Adibe says, Rebuilding confidence in the electoral system. That's the thing we really need to pay attention, how we can rebuild confidence in our electoral system in the country. So grab a copy of uh, the Punch newspaper, grab a copy of the Vanguard, the Nation, and the Daily Trust to find out details of those stories that we've brought to you on the, the, the newspaper review segment on Super Dawn. As usual, bless it. Yeah. Well, which of the stories actually caught your attention? Okay, I'll quickly go with that of um, Femi Falano, a senior advocate of Nigeria, where calls for armed forces um, against intimidating vo voters. Uh, you will recall that um, some few days, the president made a declaration that um, ballot bus snatchers should be short on site. On site. And um, the, the army has also come out to say that they will go ahead with the president's directive. But then again, you know, when it comes to the Nigerian army and the, the attitude of Nigerians towards the Nigerian army, it shows that um, just by the sight of, of, of them, they, they, there's this panic mood and all that. But then again, we just, I just want to say here that the Nigerian army should come out and look for how to, to, to that just dice the tension of Nigerians as they go towards the polls this Saturday so that on the side of the Nigerian army, um, there shouldn't be pa a panic and the Nigerians should have this, um, that, this confidence, the courage and then this um, peaceful movement about going about casting their votes and all that. But that, that, that. That does it for me this well, morning. Interesting. That. I, I think I also want to tell the same part uh, and that's um, the statement by the uh, Chief of Army Staff, uh, Lieutenant General Tukura Buratai, saying that we will treat the electoral saboteurs as enemies of the state. And then the most interesting part of that story has to do with the rider that uh, says, don't drag military into politics, PDP tells Army Chief. If you understand the significance of the President's word, uh, yeah, we heard that the Federal Executive Council are backing the President's comment yesterday. but. Regardless of it, there are so many things that can create a voter apathy in the people. And um, if you don't understand the reactions that, uh, the, the, the reactions that are strilled, the president's comment, you would understand exactly the significance of the things he has said. But nevertheless, Nigerians should be willing and, you know, comport themselves within the ambience of the law when they get to, uh, on Saturday when they want to cast the election. Don't be a ballot box snatcher. Just go there and cast your, your vote and wait for the votes to be counted. It is your right to know the winner of the election. It is your right. We're telling you that it is your right as a Nigerian. Well, that's it on the newspaper review segment on Super Dawn this morning. Remember, when we started the show, we said we have a double dozer for you that we'll be bringing to you. If you finish the first round of coffee you've gotten or the first round of tea, well, it's not too late to get some again and do a refill. Go and refill the cup because we are about to just get started. We want to take you on a ride. 
We'll take a break now. When we come back, we're looking at the topic, how the intimidation of the uh, resident electoral commissioners, the RECs, in different states. Remember, the REC are representatives of INEC on the state level. They are the ones that organize. They see that to the fact that uh, electoral materials arrive and is distributed on time for people to vote. And they also monitor the ad hoc staff so that there will be succinct and beautiful flow of the electoral process. So we'll be looking at how we can stop uh, the intimidation of uh, the RECs and the impact, the effect of the intimidation of the REC uh, on the election of Nigeria. That's part one. Part two, we will be revealing at the end of part one. So get your phones ready when you stand for you to call us in the program and make a contribution. We'll take a break now when we return. Superdome continues. Stay with us. <laughs> 